Hey guys, so welcome back. I gotta make sure the mic's on because uh, I need it to be on. It actually is on. I'm gonna put it closer to me so I don't have to talk as loud. Would this bother you guys if my mic's like right here? Um, yeah, let's not do that. Alright guys, so how do I even start? Okay, I'm just gonna like talk from the heart because that's the best policy. Honesty is the best policy. So I'm just gonna hit it to you straight. Literally, I'm not gonna cut corners. By the way, y'all like my hair, y'all dig? I asked you guys on Instagram if you wanted it to make an appearance. So I'm put I'm honestly doing this video because I want y'all to see my hair, not because I want to rant about my life, you know? But uh yeah, literally it sucks being engaged truly honestly so when i got engaged i literally had all these hopes and dreams about like how amazing it was gonna be how magical how the wedding planning was just like the best thing in the world and everybody was gonna get along and everybody was gonna be on board and it turns out maybe maybe in my case it was the complete opposite i really hope for the sake of other people and those of you that are having a great time being engaged that um it's going well and wonderful. I envy you for that, but you know what? It happens to some people for a reason, and maybe it's to make them stronger. I don't know why it's happening to me, but I guess it is what it is. And by the way, this has nothing to do with my relationship with Jason. Like, we are actually like 100% okay. This mic's bothering me. I don't want you guys to think that any of this has to do with Jason because it truly doesn't. Thankfully, thank God, our relationship, I don't know how, like, it hasn't gotten affected one bit. Like, literally, we've been like the same since like we got engaged like actually one time our relationship got tested over chick-fil-a like why chick-fil-a i wanted to get like we we're in the drive-thru i wanted to get something he didn't let me now that he didn't let me see that's where i'm wrong he was telling me you know babe like, we can't be spending money on milkshakes anymore we got a wedding to pay for us how are you gonna tell me that i can't buy me a milkshake but it wasn't just a milkshake it was just like a lot of things and a lot of stress and i kind of blew up on him over the milkshake but she was just being conscious of money. I really don't need a milkshake at like 10 o'clock at night. Let's just be honest. But yeah, that has been like our only argument. Like I really like doubted him for like a day or two. Like, do I really want to marry this man? Because he won't let me get a milkshake. But no, we are absolutely fine. It's just like the people around you literally like set the tone for like your life pretty much. Like your atmosphere, your decisions are influenced by people and people run your life. That's just how it is. Whether it's family, friends, close friends, people that you don't even know, strangers run your life, people that you look up to run your life because you're influenced by them so therefore you compare yourself and you want to be like them. So people are the problem of anything and everything. So to just get started with things, the first time I got engaged, there was a lot of people there that where we were staying at this house and literally I was getting bombarded with so many questions about what I want, what I want to do, uh, how, how many guests are going. They, I think I was even making a guest list literally two seconds after I got engaged. I was like, what am I doing? Like all the side land, like it was just like boom, like this pressure on you. Like, oh, like you have to get married, like pick out a date, which I already had a date in mind, which is in August. That's never changed. But the fact of like not being able to enjoy my engagement as much as I wanted to, that kind of sucks. It really, really does. So I was like, you know what? Like literally, I want to enjoy my engagement. And that weekend, it was about me and Jason and our friends being there. So I said, you know what? Let's just not talk about any wedding planning for the whole weekend. Turns out, I literally postponed my plans until January because I wanted to enjoy time with Jason and like tell myself that I'm a fiance, like what I've been waiting for my whole life. So that was great. I took like a little break and it was fine, but I do I did want to get married in August, which is it was at the time it was like eight months away. Now it's like three months away and I'm literally so excited. Now I'm excited, but I'm gonna tell you the backstory. So January comes around and I started looking at venues and I thought I had a budget in mind, which I did. And when I ended up going to venues and like not so much venues but like resorts and like hotels it is so expensive like if your parents are not like set up like for medicine or like lawyers or like i don't know they have a company on their own like you literally can't do it unless you like find the money or you take out a loan it is crazy money i am looking to having a small wedding maybe like 100 to 130 guests um that's kind of how i'm gonna do it and it was gonna cost me like fifteen thousand just for the ceremony and the reception like with the food that didn't include the dress the photographer um, decorations, uh, videographer, um, all the extra stuff that you, the honeymoon, like getting a place to live. So it was like, what? I definitely was not expecting it to be that expensive. I don't know why I was maybe being naive because I never really paid attention to all these wedding details because I was like, you know what? I'm just going to wait until I get married. And uh, yeah, it took me definitely by surprise. So if you are planning on getting engaged or you think you have a feeling you're going to get engaged, really do your research before you start looking at venues and stuff because you don't want to get your hopes up. And that kind of happened to me. I did get my hopes up like the first place that I was. Oh my God, this is it. It's kind 
of like buying a car or something you go to this dealership and like they present to you like the best thing ever and you just won't want to look anymore same thing happens with weddings um you go to a venue you're like this is what i want and then you don't think you can get something better than that but you guys it's possible because i did it so i remember like the first time i even went to go look at a venue oh my god this like I remember walking into this ballroom and I never really wanted a ballroom wedding. I wanted it to be like clear white walls and like curtains and drapes and stuff. So I asked like, you know, like what does it cost? Like I want drapes and stuff. And I got told that I need to get off my high horse because that's not going to happen. Which it was kind of like good at reality check. But I was like, dang, like let me be on the horse. Let me ride the horse for a little bit. Like let me imagine and like enjoy thinking about what I want my wedding to feel like. So I don't know. I kept feeling like i was putting pressured on like a lot of other people and i just don't like that i don't act on impulse well i try not to and i don't really get intimidated easily unless it's like my parents um and like i don't fall into pressure that's one thing that i just don't do i hate doing something or make myself do something that i don't want to do that's just something that i live that i live up to like i just don't like doing that and i rather like be honest and like to myself and be like you know what i really don't want help so i kind of like didn't have help because i wanted to just like not be stressed out because i hate i hate feeling that people depend on me and i'm not executing or i'm not like and i'm not doing my part because i'm so used to doing things on my own leisure and like my own time because I do work for myself, so being able, to, so having to respond to somebody about like my wedding plans was kind of like, mm, I really don't want to do that. So that's why I didn't end up having like a wedding planner. So I pretty much plan my wedding myself, and uh, that's it, pretty much it. The people that are gonna write for you and make this day special will write with you no matter what situation it is, and that's something that really like show me like wow like these people these friends that i have really really love me and they'll, they're willing to do whatever it is for me to make this day special so that's really what you have to look forward to don't pay attention to people that are not you know on the same page as you you can't convince them at the end of the day it's your wedding and what you want to do and what you want is what you should get like you and your fiance like if it's okay with that but jason's pretty much like really okay with like me like wanting things not in a way of like being bougie or anything but like he trusts my decision and like the wedding and what i want to do and he's also put so much input and like help with everything like i couldn't have asked for a better man or a better fiance like literally he's been amazing and like i said most people are gonna tell you their advice about like how their wedding went or what they think about marriage people that are i'm gonna tell you this right now people that are not married or friends to you that are not married should not be giving you married advice that just doesn't add up to me and it just will not work like how what credibility do you have to be telling somebody hey this is how you should treat your husband and this is what you should do girl you even got a boyfriend so or if you got a boyfriend y'all don't even see each other like why are you giving me this advice so that's all i'm gonna say about that so yeah also finding another thing that i want to really talk about is finding your wedding dress that has to be the most hardest but most magical experience that you're you'll encounter during this wedding planning finding my dress was so 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 hard by the way it's here in my house it's here like i have it i bet yeah i'm so excited i don't even look at it finding your dress is little that was like i got so emotionally like frustrated because i couldn't find my dress that i just literally stopped wedding planning for like i feel like from like january to like march I had this like weird god that I just didn't do anything. Like even Jason was like, babe, like are you okay? Like you don't talk about the wedding anymore? Like are you wanna get married? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like it was so overwhelming to me. And like when I get overwhelmed, I just shut down and I just don't want to do anything. Which can be a good thing and a bad thing, but mostly it's a bad thing. But I remember I went to go um wedding shopping wedding dress shopping the first time. I went to this really nice boutique in Orlando. Um, and it was great, the experience was great. I took a lot of people with me and that's a mistake that I would have done. Not because I don't love the people that I took, but because like I didn't go there with the intentions of buying a dress. I just wanted to get the feel for it. But because it was like over my budget, they didn't want to give me a response to where I get my hopes up, you know? Like I would come out with a dress and they'll just be like, okay, me like this. And I, like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's my first time trying on dresses and I wanted to take them because like they're my family and stuff. And like, they just gave me nothing. And that, even though like, I know they had good intentions and they didn't mean to like hurt me or anything like that. They just didn't want to get my hopes up telling me that's a beautiful dress but you can't afford it, you know? But just like having that reaction like, wow, you look so beautiful, like just have a good time. So whenever you take people with your dress fittings and stuff, make sure you take like the least people the best. Maybe your mom, your best friend, your grandma, your aunt, whatever. Like I, I would say three people minimum. I wouldn't take more than that because also if you take a lot of women, every woman have different tastes, different opinions, different ways that they got married and the different dresses that they wear. So having all those opinions 
and like your own it's just like does not work at all so that's really 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 overwhelming as well so i literally tried on like maybe 30 dresses maybe 40 um and i did go with a lot of people and the first couple times that i did go I took pictures of literally every dress that I wore and I would show it to everybody and it kind of lost its magic and people would still be like and like let's say I love the dress right and I show somebody that I was close to me or even one of my best friends they'll be like oh like it's nice and you're like okay like clearly it's not as pretty as I thought because they don't like it so that will play mind games with you and literally that ate me up a life because I could never find a dress so like I wanted I wanted people to response i want people to give me the response that i had towards the dress like i want people to have the same feeling that i did with the dress but i came to the conclusion that's just not gonna happen because it just won't so i feel like it's better to just save it for the day of and literally not show anybody and that's what i have done up until this point finally i found my dress i was gonna have people come with me but they just couldn't come because they were busy so i ended up going just me my mom and my grandma and literally that day i found my dress and it was the most magical thing ever I um I remember I was trying it on and then I literally got so emotional when I saw it and the song Bruno Mars I think I want to marry you started playing and I was literally like oh my god like what are the odds like I've been to like a lot of like wedding places to try and dresses and I've never heard wedding music neither, neither alone like I want to marry you by Bruno Mars which you would think they would do that as a sales pitch you know what I'm saying like kind of get in your head but literally it was a perfect time amazing I love my dress so much and no one has seen it to this day so it's gonna be a surprise first impression and it's gonna be amazing literally i had people telling me that they wanted to see it and like not so anybody like people are like savages like they don't care like there's people can be selfish sometimes so it's like having friends that i'll be like you know what like i completely understand that you don't want to show us your dress that's okay that's when you know you got a good friend because like they're for you for what you want it's about what you want for your special day not what they want you know what i'm saying so like I said, choose the people in your wedding party wisely and make sure that um, they're right for you 100%. Yeah. So me and Jason have a big party. We have 10 people on each side. That, that makes 20 of us. So it's a lot of people. So that's probably why I'm having such a hard headache. I love my friends so much and I love his friends so much. And we're literally like our own little family. So that's going to be amazing. And yeah, we got our venue. It's gonna be in uh i'm not gonna tell you why am i telling you guys i'm over here telling you all my circles obviously you guys are gonna know eventually but it's gonna be obviously here in florida it's gonna be in tampa um the tampa area and uh i had a photographer and we found catering already for the food i mean i actually got a venue i didn't go with a hotel because it was just way way too expensive and if you guys want to know like what my budget was for the wedding was around fifteen thousand, and i've been able to stay on that budget which is great it's really really tight but it's great and you can make it work so if you guys want a small wedding with like 100 130 guests i suggest keeping it to like you know like a hunt like fifteen thousand is literally like it's like the cheapest you probably find so that's just like what i'm doing i mean i have no problem telling you guys like my budget like it is what it is like i i'd much rather be spending fifteen thousand than like forty thousand because it's just it's just been worth it for me honestly and another thing that was really stressful was the fact that like i i got a really really short engagement usually people like get married in like a year like two years or like a year and a couple months but literally i wanted to just get married so that's just what i get for wanting to rush into things not rush into things but we're ready you know like we'll be together four years in august so it's time your girl's ready to get married if y'all know what i mean i found my dress and it was literally so over budget but when i put it on i just knew it was the one that was the one thing that i didn't even hesitate about paying for because I don't know, like, I, ne I I literally kept telling myself, you know, I'm just gonna buy a dress and I'm just gonna resell it. Like, I'm not gonna be attached to my dress. Like, it's no big deal, it's just a dress, blah, blah, blah. But once you put it on, it's like, you don't want nobody else having that dress. You wanna keep that dress forever, like, and I'm sure, like, I would wanna just see it in my closet just to remind myself of, like, a special day and stuff. And, like, even if I were to, like, renew, like, our vows one day or, like, take pictures together again, like, even if we have to take pictures again, if the weather sucks or whatever, it's gonna be an inside wedding, but, you know, when it, pictures are always outside, so whatever. I want my dress for myself. Maybe my daughter will wear it, but I don't know. But I can't wait for you guys to see it. I, I, I am so excited to get married and it's been really, really hard financially because I've had to cover a lot of the cost myself and like Jason and like my family too. Like it's just been really, really crazy. Um, but you know what? At the end of the day, God has supplied literally all of our needs. Like there's come days to where the payments do and I'm like, what the heck am I gonna do? Cause it's like thousands of dollars. You know what I'm saying? So. 
somehow someone provides for me i get a phone call i get a text and people are there to help me a family is there to help me and that is literally like god's hand in my life and jason's life and that's how i know that we'll be taken care of so if money is an issue literally don't worry about it be wise about your money and your expenses and what really you're putting your money towards um but just know that like if you want the wedding of your dreams just work hard save your money and just trust that god will make your dreams come true and he's definitely doing that for me i got told at the beginning that i wasn't gonna have curtains and drapes and chandeliers and i'm having that literally like times five like i'm gonna have so many drapes and so many chandeliers and lights when i got told i wasn't gonna have that because i couldn't afford it and look at me now so i think that's it for now um i do want to have like more wedding videos up i i did find a makeup artist too to do my my makeup like i was telling myself that i was gonna do my own makeup but i i'm gonna be throwing up that day i'm gonna be like a mess so emotional like talking about it makes me nauseous like so i just there's just no way i was gonna be able to do my makeup and i look good so i finally found a girl that i trust 100 percent to do my makeup i just need her to get back to me because <laughs> there's nobody else that i could trust um but yeah and then i have somebody doing my hair don't know what i'm doing to my hair yet i think i want to do like ponies like a loose pony and then like let it down for the reception because jason likes my hair pulled back so i think i might do that for the ceremony and then for the girls um, they got their dresses from Fashion Nova, which is really, really cheap. Don't make your bridesmaids spend a lot of money. That was one thing that I was, like, always conscious of. It's, like, I'm having this girls be part of my day. And, obviously, like, you can't cost everything unless you're, like, rich. But I'm not rich. But I've been able to give them the plug for a couple things. And I got him this really, really amazing bridesmaid box that so many brands sponsored it. So... It was just like an amazing thing that my job was able to give back to my friends and that brand supported me and loved me enough to give my friends free stuff. So if you guys haven't seen the video, I will have it linked up here so you guys can go check it out. Um, and then their shoes, they're going to get hooked up with shoes and jewelry. So my girls are like literally going to be so spoiled and they're just like the best squad I could have ever asked for. If you guys have any questions about anything, leave them down below. If anything that I just didn't cover or just something that you want to know that you might want to ask me. If I get like a lot of questions, which I probably, I don't know if I will or not, then I'll just make it like a Q&A, maybe on Instagram or even on YouTube. But feel free to talk to me and if you guys have any concerns or any questions about like, you know, some issues that you're going through, like, let it be, like, a chat window, like, or if any of you are already married, can give me some advice, I would, or, like, if you guys went through something similar to, like, my experience when you guys were engaged in wedding planning, like, let me know down below, because I need all the support and encouragement that I need, I'm three months in, I am actually, like, 87 days left to my wedding, I'm so excited, so... I just wanted to share this with you guys. I know I haven't like talked to you guys in forever just because A, I'm always busy and excuse. B, I don't want to be vulnerable. That's also an excuse. But when I do, it's like really, really effective. Not tooting my own horn, but like, I guess like when I open up, I'm literally like an open book and it's really hard to find that, I guess, in this community and like the YouTube world, like in influencers because it's hard to, to put yourself out there in social media and knowing how people are so rude and like cruel and like don't twist your words and like, even like people in your in your personal life will twist your words and like literally destroy your soul. But you know what? This is what I chose to do for a living, for my career. You guys are a huge part of my life. So I want you guys to be part of the journey. And if I keep growing and make successful it's because of you guys. So this is the least I can do in letting you guys get to know me better and just be part of my life. And I, I honestly love talking to you guys. I just don't do it because I'm just scared because you never know the response you're going to get. You know what I'm saying? So... I really hope that you guys love this video. Again, if you have any questions that I just didn't answer or I didn't cover, let me know down below and I will get back to you guys. Thank you so much for all the wishes, all the engagement pictures that I posted on Instagram. So much love has gone into that. And I will be posting more pictures now for like the countdown. So I'm really excited to show you guys the pictures. So it's gonna be great. I can't wait to be married and I can't wait for this journey. And it's an amazing thing that's gonna happen to my life this year. I love you guys so much. Muchos besitos. Yeah, abrazos, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.